When you're dealing with multiple conditions at once, we call this complex chronic illness, and you've tried every diet out there to try and feel better. And then none of them have worked much, and you might be thinking, food is not medicine. What I eat doesn't matter. I need to tell you something important. Food is not a magic bullet. What it is is the foundation. Diet and lifestyle can improve your autoimmune and chronic illness symptoms between 70 to 95%. I believe the role food plays in health is greatly misunderstood. What you eat does matter. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you four ways diet helps improve your health even when you have complex stuff going on. Welcome to the Therapeutic Food Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Marion Mitchell. I'm an integrative nutrition health coach, therapeutic diet expert, and founder of The Road to Living Whole. There are many different diets out there. It's hard to know which one is right for you with your chronic illness and autoimmune disease. In this podcast, I'm going to share with you the foundational pieces every single therapeutic diet out there shares, and also how to use the best one for your particular diagnosis. If you've been looking for a meal planning partner, help navigating the complicated healthcare system, and want to feel better quickly, I'm your girl. Grab your kombucha and notebook. Let's dive in. While there are pharmaceutical companies and doctors out there saying that diet doesn't matter, 70 years of nutrition science and many upon many doctors watching their patients' health transform with diet changes says otherwise. I can tell you in my own practice, every single client's health improved when they changed the way that they ate. I help people with really complicated stuff going on. I'm talking people dealing with latent viruses like EBV flaring up and Lyme disease, major GI issues, hormones off, mold illness, SIBO, etc. Diet helps every single one of them. But it might not be the way that you think. I want to share with you four ways diet does help your health. And you're going to see that what you eat does matter. Number one, diet helps address nutritional deficiencies. When you are eating the standard American diet full of highly processed convenience foods, fast food, soda, sugar, baked goods, heavy on the grains, you are going to get nutrient depleted. These foods have little to no nutritional value. They actually can deplete nutrients, especially sugar, and are incredibly inflammatory to the body, especially the GI tract. And when the GI tract gets inflamed, it's unable to create and absorb nutrients from the food that you're bringing in. When you change your diet to reduce these highly processed foods, you reduce sugar, you reduce these baked goods and all these inflammatory foods, and you fill your plate up with produce and sufficient protein and healthy fats, you're loading up on foods that are fighting inflammation, packed full of nutrients, feed the microbiome, and give the body what it needs to do its job well. One analogy I like to use is the standard American diet is like putting apple juice in your car's fuel tank, where eating the proper healthy diet is putting fuel in the fuel tank. Which one is your car going to run on better? Your body is the same way. It needs the proper fuel to be able to function properly. When it's given the wrong fuel, it can't do its job well. Symptoms of nutrient deficiencies include fatigue, brain fog, and inability to concentrate, pain, weakness, slow healing, poor sleep, muscle cramps, poor dental health, weakened immune system so you're getting sick all the time, your vision getting worse year after year, receding gum lines, neuropathy, Skin rashes and bumps, think about like chicken skin on the back of your arms. Stomach issues like nausea, bloating, burping, diarrhea, constipation, etc. Osteopenia, which is um, before um, osteoporosis, so it's just your bones, like that your, your body is taking nutrients from your bones because it needs it, and so then your bones are getting weaker. Food cravings, 
depression, anxiety, insomnia, PMS, PMDD, the list goes on. Supplements are great, but they can only fill in gaps of a healthy diet. They do not replace a healthy diet. The second way food helps improve your health is it supports your detox pathways. Let's say you're dealing with mold illness or heavy metal toxicity or Lyme or EBV or parasites. You're not going to be able to get them out of your body if your detox pathways are clogged. Detox pathways are like your liver, gallbladder, bowels, and skin and urine, right? They're like filters. What happens when your home ill filter gets clogged? It's filthy, for one. That actually reminds me I need to go replace mine. (laughs) Um, Two, air can't move through it easily. And if you leave it there long enough, then your AC has to run more. And eventually, if you don't ever replace the filter, your air conditioner is going to break down. And then you have to get it repaired or replaced. But if you keep the filter clean, the AC can run well for ages, needing only maintenance, right? Before you can detox mold and metals or pathogens, your detox pathways have to be functioning optimally. If you're not, then the toxin gets released and then it's going to get absorbed again. That's not what you want. You want it out. So how do you support your detox pathways? Do not start a juice cleanse, please. First, you need to give it nutrients that it needs for all three phases of detox. And you do that with a healthy diet. Second, you need to get the toxins that your body's already dealing with from used up hormones and cells and environmental stuff you're getting exposed to. Like, you have to get them out daily. That means you need to be having bowel movements daily. That means you need to be drinking water and going to the bathroom regularly. Going pee a couple times a day because you don't like going to the bathroom all the time is not helping your cause, okay? And then third, you need to reduce the number of toxins coming in. I give you strategies on how to do that over in episode 36, so I'm not going to dive into that in this episode. The third way food can help improve your autoimmune and chronic illness symptoms is it can reduce inflammation. Highly processed chemical and sugar-laden nutrient-depleted foods are inflammatory to the body. These food-like products are not actually food. For millions of years, we've lived off of foods from the earth, not factories. Seed oils contain an unnaturally high amount of omega-6 fatty acids, which are pro-inflammatory to the body when they're not in the correct ratio with omega-3s. Sugar suppresses our immune system, promotes inflammation, and literally pulls nutrients like magnesium out of our bodies. Not getting enough nutrients is also (laughs) inflammatory to the body. Highly processed foods also lack the food our healthy bacteria need in our gut, while it actually feeds the unhealthy bacteria in our gut. We have a balance of like helpful and harmful bacteria, right? And so if you're not feeding the helpful bacteria, you're feeding the harmful bacteria, right? This can lead to dysbiosis and leaky gut. Leaky gut is the root of many ailments and can trigger autoimmune disease, histamine intolerance, and other conditions. When you eat well, you will reduce inflammation, especially in the gut, and this is an essential step in the healing process to get and stay healthy. And the fourth way diet can help improve symptoms and your health in general is it reduces incoming pathogens during the healing process. So suppose you're dealing with histamine buildup in the body. This is named histamine intolerance or maybe mold toxicity, right? The proper diet can reduce dietary sources of histamine or mold while nourishing the body with vital nutrients for the detox process and healing. This will help you feel better more quickly and get the healing process going. Another example is reducing glyphosate in your diet. Glyphosate reduces our microbiome as the bacteria in our gut is similar to that in the soil that it's killing. Glyphosate also inhibits the body's ability to absorb nutrients. 
it's been linked to promoting cancer and also disrupting our endocrine system, which is our hormones. By reducing glyphosate exposure, you are going to be much better off health-wise, no matter what. So now that you know how diet helps, let's talk about where to begin. I never like to tell you what to do without giving you a place to begin. Knowledge is great, but being able to apply that knowledge is way better. Step one is just to start adding real food to your plate. Usually that starts with vegetables, but depending on what you're eating, that could be protein or even fruit too. Just start adding minimally processed foods to your plate. I have a great guide that helps you kind of give you a place to start in all of this. So I recommend downloading that. It is in the show notes. It's called my healthy eating guide. Uh, So go ahead and download that if you haven't already. The other option is to join my new online coaching course. I launched it last week. It's called the Therapeutic Food Framework. And really, this is the coaching framework that I've used with my clients for the last 10 years. I just put it into an online platform so that, for one, all the information's in one place. You can read it again and again. And and it's an 18-week course that really just helps you nail down the diet side of things so you can start feeling better more quickly. And it has three steps. Step one is when we are upgrading and establishing a healthy food baseline. This is where healthy eating is your norm and requires no extra mental energy. It's just what you do. So no matter how busy life is or how crazy it gets, eating healthy is your norm. I include meal plans complete with recipes and shopping lists so you don't even have to guess at what to eat. Plus, you're not eating the same four meals all the time, so you're less likely to get bored. Plus, you're getting a variety of nutrients, which is super important. So this step is essential because it needs to be your fallback. Like I said, it doesn't, it won't matter how crazy your life gets because this will be your normal requiring no extra thought. It's just how you eat. This is step number one, hands down. We're not going to like jump into some like special diet, what we call therapeutic diet, because that's not going to help you in the long run. What's going to help you in the long run is that your normal supports your health. And then once that's normal, we move on to step two, which is a therapeutic diet, a healing diet. We can't really say that it's a healing diet, but it's a therapeutic diet, right? And to transition to this, it's just a few tweaks from what you're already doing. So it requires much less effort. This is where we're removing inflam- like f- inflammatory foods, like the really inflammatory ones. And it really depends on your condition onto what is being removed and added in for the healing process. And again, there's more meal plans, more recipes, more shopping lists, and even more tips to add on on how to overcome common roadblocks. And this is the diet that you follow when you're what we call in a flare, when you're symptomatic and need to be more intentional with reducing inflammation and um, working on imbalances in the body. But then we need to transition off of it and on to that baseline again. Now, depending on your condition, like let's say if you have autoimmune disease, you're going to have to be gluten-free forever. We might not go there in step one, but in step three, you, you're you going to need to be gluten-free for life, right? Or if you're a mold-sensitive person like I am, then you're going to pretty much minimize those foods that are high mold. Doesn't mean you have to avoid them forever, but you're you're aware of what they are and you don't make them central parts of what you eat day in and day out right? But if you have like metabolic disorder, like blood sugar dysregulation, uh, you know, you started with high cholesterol and, you know, high blood pressure, and now those are normal, then you're going to be able to just eat a normal healthy diet. You're not, there's a little bit more flexibility in there. So it just really depends on what you have going on. But you still never stay on that kind of strict diet that's, you know, eliminating these super inflammatory foods because they're not going to be super inflammatory forever, right? It's an online program. It still includes a coaching session. It still includes unlimited email support, but it also includes an online student community. And I'll be doing live Q&A sessions in there twice a month 
for you to be able to ask questions. It's kind of like group coaching. So you get the one-on-one where it's all about you. You can really, you know, your roadblocks, your things, but then you also can get those little questions answered like, hey, can I have carob instead of cocoa or things like that, right? And the reason I'm suggesting this is because it's time to get off of the diet roller coaster. It's time to break up with dieting for the diagnosis and really learning what it means, what it looks like to eat when you're not symptomatic and when you are. Because typically when you're dealing with chronic illness, you're going to be in a flare and then you're going to kind of be in a place where it's in remission or you're asymptomatic. It kind of just depends on the diagnosis, which term you use, right? And so those are two very different ways of eating. One, you need to be way more intentional about self-care and those extra, you know, those inflammatory foods for when you're symptomatic. But then everyday living, you you know, there's more variety and there's a little bit more wiggle room, which is nice, right? Like you don't have to be strict forever and you can just live your life. But healthy is still the baseline because that's what's going to prevent the flares. And when they do come, they're going to be less severe and short-lived. And that is the goal. And I just launched it. I'm super excited about it. The link to learn more is roadtolivingwhole.com backslash therapeutic food framework. I will also have that linked in the show notes and you can click there. So quick note, when you have complex stuff going on, food is the foundation. It isn't a replacement for other therapies, but when food is right, All those extra therapies will work more effectively and faster. You're also probably going to need less of them and a less aggressive treatment, which saves you money, and it can prevent a healing crisis. So it's a win-win all around. Food is a foundation, but when you have a lot of stuff going on, it's not going to be the only treatment. So I really want to make sure we stress that, okay? Quick review before we end this episode, food absolutely matters and it can improve your symptoms anywhere from 70 to 95%. And it does this by addressing nutrient deficiencies, supporting your detox pathways, reducing inflammation, and reducing offending pathogens. The therapeutic food framework gives you the how-to so that you can get the benefit from food, plus all the lifestyle tips on how to make it work in your life that are missing from a lot of other programs, like how to dine out, how to travel, how to party, how to talk to foods and or to foods to friends and family, you know, and then also lifestyle strategies, stress management, sleep hygiene, you know, and reducing environmental toxins. But you're not going to do that all at once. It's step by step, and I guide you through it every step of the way. It also helps you differentiate between how to eat for everyday life and for when you're in a flare. And I think that's super important because they are different. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you found this episode helpful, would you do me a favor and help others find it by leaving a review, sharing a screenshot on social media, or sharing the link with a friend? By you sharing what you've learned, others are able to find this podcast and join our community. Be sure to check out my website, www.roadtolivingwhole.com for over 160 delicious recipes, a variety of meal plans, and a blog packed full of even more healthy living tips. If you'd like to learn more about how to work with me as your coach, you can schedule a free consult through www.roadtolivingwhole.com backslash health-coaching backslash. Until next time, friend. Bye.